just uh, climbed about uh, four or five hundred feet and we've got an amazing view. Have a look. We're in a very thick cover. My buddy here is uh, hydrating and uh, getting himself sorted. sorted, whatever that means. God damn flies. <laughs> Son of a bitch. But uh, you'd probably wonder why we're dressed like members of special forces. Because, well, for me to be invisible and to reach solitary places and enjoy them uh, without being detected, that's what it's all about. It's about the fun. It's sort of like you know, competition with yourself and the rest of the world where you can just sort of sneak away and nobody knows where you are except your dear, nearest and dearest, you tell them obviously and leave a map, which I've done. But uh, it's great being in unknown territory, unrecognised and unknown by anybody. And that's what real uh, high-end stealth camping is. For now, over and out. Okay, we've reached our objective for the night. A nice flat area here for our bashers. Any brambles that Harry was telling me, they make an appearance when we actually come up here until about nine. So, um, here we are. We decided to camp uh, in an open area in the what was kind of like a Borneo jungle on the way up. Very thick cover. We found a, an excellent spot here which uh, will do us both well. As you can see we've got our bashers up and uh, trying to blend in a little bit at least. And in the morning the view from the four star hotel is outrageously good. Very high up here, probably about, uh, I don't know what we are, 900 feet. And uh, my buddy here, uh, using a, a an army basher DPM as well, he's gone for the low profile, maybe he's expecting a storm. And he's put a poncho on the front, time for some scram. And uh, tonight he's got a BCB mug. Boiling away nicely. I don't know what is on the menu tonight, but knowing him will be spices. Fast on spice. Okay, there you go. Supposed to be something like that, and that's kind of what I'll have as well. <laughs> so, what kind of fuel are you using on this? Uh, this is a meths. So you got a meths. Is yeah. it, is it uh, fire rope? Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. Just a, a, a Tatonga Transa uh -huh. stainless steel. So you got an hour and ten burn on one full unit. Yeah. Um, ideal. Does my needs. I can take the burner out and I can turn it upside down and use it as a firebox. Yeah, yeah. So it's a handy wee thing to have. I got a cheap one from China which I don't like because it flares. Right, okay. Too high. This will be the real McCoy you got here, is it? Um, this is the real one here, yeah. this guy. So you get cheap ones and you get real ones. You best to go for the authentic one, eh? Yeah, guaranteed. Every time. Every time. It's just after midnight and uh, we've had a, our first meal and we've been very blessed with the weather. The forecast is perpetual rain from about 1 or 2 in the morning and uh, scattered throughout the day. So it's going to be a really wet undergrowth tomorrow. But we're prepared for all of that. And uh, so until tomorrow morning, uh, I bid you good night and see you at dawn. Good night. Rise and shine. Cold night, but kept warm. It's midsummer officially, I think, and it feels like winter. But that's Scotland for you. So I think it's time to well and truly rise and shine. I feel refreshed enough. I think. Uh, it worked to travel light. So all I've got here is a, a 
Liddy bag, covered in Thea, Cortex, uh, DPM, and uh, a light cool sort of down jacket, just a cheap one, uh, a bit like a, a military softy. I didn't sleep with the boots on, I have to say. I was tempted to, but it's uh, well, always good to get your feet uh, rested and, and uh, dried out nicely. Testing com over. Testing com, are you receiving over? Thank you, over out. So where does the, the belt attached to the pack? Is there a hook? Uh, the here that comes with a belt. Oh, right. The same belt I've got, but I took the belt off and I yeah. could use exactly the same hippo pack. Uh -huh. And put it in, and it'll just keep everything compact to your body. Mm -hmm. I just take the pouches off and mould them into the back. Yeah. Your total weight of kit for five days survival basically is how many kilos in the sack and the, the um, vest? Putting it all together, you're looking at 15 kilograms max weight. My yeah. chest rig has got all the utilities I need to use at hand. Mm. Navigation, filming, cutting tools, fire prep, steel and striker, belt kit holds, first aid, utilities, added utilities, foods and two litres of water. Pack has got one module inside which is a, a large dry bag, 40 litre, of which I've got the bed sheet, which is the hammock, rolled up, that's then rolled up inside the basher, all into one unit, all the air compressed out so it's flat packed, roll it up, get it in the back of the bag, all my foods are in there, all my cooking utilities are in there, so, main kit is in the pack, ideal. I have to add guys that, uh the hour and a half or two hours uh, insertion into this uh, cover last night was actually fairly pain free. Uh, two secret weapons. One was to take the uh, electrolyte drink uh, three hours before I set off. No cramp last night for the first time ever after a workout. Great news, so that's really highly recommended. And uh, point two, I'm carrying roughly the same kit with my buddy here, about 12 kilos, 13 kilos max. Well, get this right, I think it's 11 kilos for the, the rucksack and then 2 or 3 kilos for the tack vest. Survival system and accommodation. So it works, definitely works. And okay, it's not a lightweight mountain kit, you know, with nylon and high tech and expensive tents and etc. Uh, but it's robust, uh, simple, and convenient to use, tried and tested, and recommended. So, uh, what's that, a fox? A male fox? Hi. Or a deer? Uh, could it be a deer? Barking. Barking, aye. It sounded Nothing like here. a fox though, Fox didn't is it? more higher pitched. Yeah, it's more like a cat scream. More like a, ah, like yeah. a scream, eh? Yeah. But they're barking, so they're lucky you can. We're here, but you can see you, but you can't see us. Yeah. <laughs> Bottles on it. That just falls down. Find where the bottles are. To the side. Up. And one unit, good to go. Trying to reduce our kit, this is a US Rangers Marine Corps kit uh, method of folding a t-shirt so it takes up matchbox or cigarette packet size space only. Uh, buddy here will demonstrate. Take a t-shirt and bring it over on itself around two inches at either seam. Take it and fold it down flat on your table or display or wherever you're going to do it. In this case back of the vehicle. From one sleeve, bring in half, fold the sleeve back.
take this sleeve, bring it over on itself, fold it in. Bring it in so you've got a point. That's your point of origin to start rolling. Tightly fold it and roll it back on itself. One compact unit can fit in your pack. Look at the size of your t-shirt. And this goes in the back of your pack, takes up no space. There you go mate. Job done. So today's objective is to uh, move through some territory as invisible as possible. And the challenge on the front that presents. We're walking along Deer Street, Roman Road, and uh, we've had to leave the road because there are lots of dog walkers and we don't want to cause any unnecessary fear or alarm. So we're fox walking, which means to walk through cover and not snap any twigs and be as silent as possible. Well that's uh, brunch finished with and now we've got to source water for tonight and tomorrow and find a bug out location which is more sheltered because it's quite a cold wind. So we decided to camp in a forest tonight to give us extra shelter. Here's got a really good basher, um, and of course underneath a uh, hammock, which is a high quality. I think he said it was a DD. Yes, it is. Yes, DD Mark Six. DD Mark Six. Six. It's thick, thick, thick Gore-Tex. I think very strong zip, double lined, and inside the cavity is slipped in insulation, which won't move because it's sealed in. Yeah. And that's just to give you a little bit more uh, That's in cover. case I'm working on my, my station and any pine cones come down will bounce off that and miss my head. <laughs> Is that really what you believe, ah, believe you're exactly doing? That's exactly what I've done it for. <laughs> well, I'm going to get dunked in the head by a bunch of acorns during the night because some squirrel will be a duck. <laughs> anyway, you say you've got a badger set right under your uh, We've got a rabbit bed. set. Not many people get a, a badger set under their bed, do they? So there's a massive one here. Yeah. But we've also got rabbit holes right behind. Oh yeah, are they active? Um, that field. Yep. But this is an animal trail. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look very busy to me. I've got a feeling the badgers have had the youngsters and they've moved on. Ah, there's nothing when you come out of there. No. I'm glad you said that. I feel better about that now. <laughs> there is a, a really nice uh, atmosphere in the forest. I mean, it's completely away from chaos of uh, society and um, it's actually got its challenges but there's kind of a agreeable challenges aren't they? Well. And look at the beauty of it, I mean, look at this panorama. And a quick rundown of my little arrangement, because there's quite a brisk breeze tonight I think it could be cool in the early hours and if we get rain in the wind um, it'll be driving so what I've done I've gone for the uh, kind of coffin idea where you put yourself underneath the basha can't sit up, you stay flat and just go straight to sleep. But the, on the prevailing side, I've given myself a very tight pegging uh, along the mid body lens area and the head area so it can lash down rain as hard as it likes and blow a hoolie uh, and I'll just curl over and snore my head off. So that's the whole idea. It's not a very tidy camp under here, nothing's really squared away, but the bed's made and the cooking utensils are ready for action in a couple of hours' time. And all we've got to do now is rest, recreate, and uh, reminisce. Uh, we've had a, a fun day. We have been working in this very thick, uh, dense uh, pine woodland. It's a very mature forest, very nice actually. 
the setup tonight has been changed slightly. Uh, my buddy's uh, tidied his squared away a lot of his kit. He's sitting uh, like a green man, virtually invisible and recognisable in Civvy Street. And uh, so we had some good fun. And uh, uh, there was one moment when we tried to evade Joe Public on Deer Street. And it dawned on me actually today that Deer Street, what, what, what a strange name. Then it, it occurred to me there's a lot of deer in this area and you know there have been deer here for thousands of years heavy amount of deer and there was a famous Jed Forest if people remember their history books that used to exist and one of the oldest trees is still just about holding together uh, on the west extreme of Jedburgh Borough about two miles out of town on the on main road the hanging tree and it's a very old one of the old Jed Forest trees I understand I believe so there was a huge oak forest in, in, in these valleys and tributaries and so there must have been a lot of wildlife and I just wondered if the lovely long straight road was known as Deer Street because if you know the country, if you're a country person you're walking along a, a, a straight clearing in a forest or a forest track that's quiet you will see deer often at a distance and if you're downwind and you stand still you get a good look at them and they stare you out and then eventually somebody moves that's what they like. So Deer Street would be a great place for seeing deer half a mile ahead. Um, so uh, I wonder if that's why it's called Deer Street. I like to think these sort of things, you know, add a little bit of colour to my imaginative lifestyle. So uh, that's our uh, last bug out tonight, bug out tonight underway. The wind has dropped for the moment and we're taking precautions to make sure that we can deal with the change in climate in the early hours. Until the morning, I bid you all a good night once again. Uh, hang in there and stand by. Good morning, guys. What a morning it is. Have a look. Well guys, it's been a great uh, three days of extreme stealth technique practice uh, in the wild and uh, I highly recommend that you give it a try if you can. Come one with nature in your own unique way. And a shout out to two of my subscribers who I promise to give a shout out to. One is Michelle in the Scottish Borders. Uh, thank you for following my, my uh, exploits and also Dave Outdoors apologies that we didn't do a mountain experience but the weather was predicted to be quite atrocious and quite cold, windy and wet and, and it would be difficult for filming so we headed to the Scottish borders to the Jedburgh area and uh, instead so sorry about that Dave Outdoors so until next time it's goodbye from me uh, Cheerio McBrin Thank you for your company. Thank you for your company. Until next time. Until next time, I'll pass this one.